Part 5, May June 2015, Paper 12. Question 26. What is not an essential condition for an observable interference pattern to occur between the waves from two sources? So to have um, interference, first thing is that two or more waves, they should overlap. So to produce a sustainable and observable interference pattern, the source must be monochromatic. Monochromatic means it should have a single wavelength and coherent. What is meant by coherent? Two or more sources are called coherent if not only they have the same frequency, same wavelength, and also they should be in phase. So remember, to have an interference pattern, they should first overlap and they should be monochromatic they should have single wavelength they should be of the same frequency which means they should have same time period same wavelength and they should have a constant phase difference so let's see option a the frequency of the source must be equal yeah obviously why because they need same frequency that is the, one of the definition of coherence the source must be coherent yes it should be coherent to produce an observable interference pattern the source must emit wave of equal amplitude. Now that is not a necessary condition for interference to occur. So if the amplitude is not the same, also interference can occur. The waves from the two sources must overlap. Yes, of course, if they overlap only, it, it interfere to form the fringes. So the option is C. Question 27. The source S emits microwaves with constant amplitude. The microwaves hit a metal, metal screen P and are reflected. A stationary wave is formed between S and P. The wavelength of the microwave is much smaller than the distance between S and P. So what they mean by the wavelength is much smaller than the distance P. That means there are so many wavelengths. A detector Q is moved at a slow constant speed from S to P. What happens to the amplitude of the signal detected by Q? So as you can see, the wavelength is smaller than S and P. So you have one wavelength, two wavelength. You, will, you can have many wavelengths in between, right? So that means you have multiple complete waves. Uh, between S and P. Now this detector is moving from S to P. So this, these points, the minimum um, displacement, they are known as nodes and the maximum displacement, they are known as anti-nodes. So when they are moving from node to anti-node, your signal is going to increase, the amplitude is going to increase. And when it's moving from anti-node to node, it's going to decrease. So they are going to regularly increase and decrease. Again, going to increase and decrease. Okay, what happened to the amplitude of the signal detected by Q? Decreases steadily. No, it's not going to decrease steadily because there are multiple waves, uh, multiple complete waves between S and P increases and decreases it regularly yes it's going to increase uh, when it's coming from node to anti-node it's going to decrease from anti-node to node again that the same scenario repeats so the answer is option b question 28 a pattern of waves was observed without being able to view the source of the waves. The pattern is represented in the diagram, which can cause this pattern. So this pattern you can observe when it's diffracting as well as when it's interfering. So region of minimum intensity, region of maximum intensity is observed in different interference also this shape you can see when it passes a slit a wave will be diffracted the changes shape in this position so this pattern will be caused by diffraction and interference therefore the option is b question 29 a positive charge and negative charge of equal magnitude are placed a short distance apart which diagram best represents the associated electric field 
As you can see, electric field will move from positive direction to negative direction. So this is not the answer. Option C and D are incorrect. As you can see, option A, the electric field is coming from negative charge to the positive charge, which is incorrect. As you can see in option B, it's going from positive charge to negative charge. And you can see there is this um, change in shape that is due to the ref uh, repulsion between them. So they will have this shape. So the answer is option B. A charged oil drop of mass M with N excess electrons is held horizontal stationary in the uniform electric field between two horizontal plates separated by a distance D. The voltage between the plates is V, the elementary charge is E, and the acceleration of free fall is G. What is the value of M? So you can see the mass of the oil drop is m. It has n number of electrons. Um, the distance between the plates are kept at a distance d. The gravity, the acceleration of free fall is g. And the elementary charge, that is e, the voltage given is v. Now they are kept stationary. That means they are being, the weight of the oil drop is being balanced by the upward electric force. We know electric field strength is equal to force per unit charge, or you can say it is the potential gradient, which is V over D. What's the force? This, this electric force is being balanced by the weight. So electric force is balanced by the weight. So the weight is mg. So instead of force, electric force, it is balanced by mg. So electric force is equal to the weight of the oil drop. So I'm taking my F electric force is equal to mg because they are held stationary. And Q, Q is the entire charge. So elementary charge is E, a number of electrons are there. The total charge is Ne is equal to V over D. Now I need to find what is the value of n. That means keeping this equation, I have to make n as the subject. So when you make n as the subject, n goes to this side and the remaining things goes to another side. So it becomes mgd over ev. As you can see, the option is B. 